Oh, it's so cold, the car won't start. <laughs> it's like 33 degrees here in Georgia, and this time on Finnegan's Garage, I'm putting floors in the rubber duck, because unbeknownst to you guys, it doesn't have any right now. <laughs> Check this out. It is early. What is it? Monday? Yeah. It's Monday morning. Ah, I just got back from a roadkill shoot. Then I went straight into a Faster with Finnegan shoot in Alabama. I got another Faster with Finnegan shoot on Wednesday in Alabama. Which leaves me about a day and a half to finish a Faster with Finnegan project car, which happens to be the Rubber Duck Firebird. Um, you guys, if you watch that show, I hope you do are gonna see on the Motor Trend channel uh, us putting a completely new rear suspension in it, converting it from leaf springs to coilovers, new ladder bars, new fuel system, all in the quest of running eight second passes. And um, we didn't finish it while we were filming. Camera crew had to go. And uh, now I need to finish the floors. Uh, there are no floors in this car behind the front seats. And obviously we want that. So that's today's project. Finish the floors so that I can go to the track and hopefully run an eight second pass. That would be a good way to end that episode. Anyway, uh, after I walk the dogs, we'll get into it. Honestly, a lot of times it feels like they're walking me. There she is, coming out of hibernation. It is cold today, it's like 33 degrees in Georgia. My eight year old is helping me unload the car. Pretty sweet. You stay home from school with the sniffles. You don't lay on the couch all day and watch TV. You hope dad. I think the batteries in our motor dying. It's gonna take all day. <laughs> Dude, that is a brand new battery. The car's only sat for like the last, I don't know, week inside of Square Force, but it's cold enough that that battery is unhappy. So here's the update. Uh, I know I said I'd be working on the Caddy, except in the midst of a Fast with Finnegan shoot on this car, we ran out of time while we were filming to finish it. It has to go to the track the day after tomorrow, and uh, we're going to attempt to run eights in this thing finally. And uh, the plan to run eights included new ladder bars for the rear suspension, getting rid of the leaf springs, putting in coilovers, and while we did all of that, because the new ladder bars were bigger and we had changed the ride height, we lowered the car, we had to cut most of the floor out in the back of the car. And so uh, Newburn did some nice aluminum work in the back here to close it out. Uh, we wrapped production and now we're just meeting back at the track to film the track test. So I need to finish all of this in here. And uh, <laughs> while I was out of town filming Roadkill this week, I left the car in the box and it got real cold and now the battery's dead. So waiting for wifey and my brother to get over to help me push this thing into the garage so that I can work on it. I'll tell you what though, loving the new stance. And uh, shout out to Ryan at RK Racecraft in Cartersville, Georgia for handling the alignment on this thing because uh, it should go straight now. It went pretty straight before, but now that we've changed the whole rear end of the car, it really needed an alignment and he got it all dialed in, so. Yeah, let's get it in the garage. Okay, here's the lay of the land. Seats are out of the car. I would love to replace them because they're those horrible, cheap, plastic, really uncomfortable seats that, you know, they're really light, but man, you don't want to drive down the street for very long in these things. And this is a street strip car. Uh, it's done over a thousand miles during Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0. Tony, uh, and I, no, I don't think we ever drove this together, but Newburn and I did Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0, did a thousand miles, never even took the back tires off the car. And it ran 9-0, 9-0, 9-0, over and over again on the last day. Could not get it to go into the eights because we were out of fuel system. Uh, and so for an episode of Fast with Finnegan, we decided to make it run eights. And the easiest thing would have been to just put a fuel pump in it and go run eights. But we knew there were some issues with the rear suspension so we took the rear end out of the car 
to convert it to coilovers, and that's when we realized both axle tubes on that rear end, the old Dana 60, were bent forward like three eighths of an inch, like like bad. It was really bent bad. And the original ladder bar set up in the car was also trashed. The holes in the mounts and the front of the bars, the pivots were just completely wallered out. So new ladder bar from Applied Racing Technology, new coilovers from QA1, they're the mod series, and a new rear end from Quick Performance. Uh, it's now a nine inch. And um, all that got done on the show, ran out of time to put a floor back in it. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the carpet from here back, cause it's not gonna fit anyway. And it's in my way. And then I'm gonna devise a fairly simple way to put a floor in here quick, because I'd like to have it nice and I'd like to retain as much of the space back here as I could, but no, no time for that. So whatever is the quickest, easiest way to put this together is how I'm gonna do it even though it might not be the most attractive. So here we go. Let's cut some carpet. The simplest, quickest way to do this is not the most attractive, nor does it utilize the space we have. Like you could just go straight down with a wall, flat piece here, flat piece there, box this down here. Like you could do that. I don't want to do that, but you could do that. All right, next up, get the carpet pulled back. I may actually just I might just cut it right here because that's the edge of the seat mount on the passenger side. That's how far back the floor got cut to clear this. So this carpet's just gonna be in the way. So, oh, yeah, we should just cut this straight back. Okay, what is that? Sears Craftsman 19, what, is that a Rebel? What is this? What was my floor made out of? Hold on. <laughs> Let me put this down and move this carpet and find out what the heck is under here. I don't know who glued this carpet in, but they used Gorilla Glue. I don't know what they made this floor out of, but it feels like aluminum. I think even the carpet doesn't want to show this. That says qualifier, Sears Craftsman. I have no idea, 1994. It's a race sticker on the floor of this car with stars and bars on it. I don't know what it was, something it's It's a race sticker, I don't know. <laughs> this car's got a bunch of history. It's won money at Orlando Speed World a bunch of times. Obviously not with me behind the wheel. First thing I'm gonna do now that the carpet is cut back is I am gonna get a piece of scrap material and I'm gonna take some rough dimensions and then bend this in the sheet metal brake to get an idea of the angle that I need to make this go. So it's basically gotta go from the rear tubs down and then forward to where the trans tunnel and floor got cut behind the seats. So this is our guinea pig right here. So there's our template. These are the angles we need, minus that little step right there. That was uh, my initial bend and then I rebent it the other way. Uh, but this is in general what I need to make and I have some 50 thousandths thick aluminum sheet metal I believe it's 3000 series it's very easy to bend it's a monster piece not going to be easy to work with 
My options for trimming this are the Mittler Brothers stomp shear, which will do the job. I also invested in one of these finally. I bought an actual electric hand metal shear. Did a lot of research online to find one that would do, you know, everything. This goes all the way down to 10 gauge steel. So might give this thing a shot because I haven't used it yet. And I like playing with new tools. So no, Makita didn't send it to me. No, they didn't pay me. So whatever opinion I give you on this thing is, uh, you know, unsolicited by Makita or whoever owns Makita at this point. So here's my piece. This line here represents a break. This side goes down. Here's another line here. This side goes down. This will be the sides of it. This will be the top of it. These two lines are additional breaks. This is where it goes rearward, kicks up, and then kicks up again, and then we'll get riveted or screwed to the panel at the back of the car. So what we're gonna to need to do here is slice here and slice here on both sides so that we can then put it in the brake and make our bends. Now it is true, I did say, I have this new tool, I wanna to use this new tool, but also I have fruitcake and I really think this will work good as a uh, lubricant for the blade here. And uh, whenever you're cutting aluminum like that, especially in a vertical bandsaw with fine teeth in the blade, you, you know, you should use some wax or something. And this, this is Lennox lube tube. It's expensive. And um, I use that when you have a perfectly good fruitcake that somebody sent you. That's what I'm saying. So we're gonna employ the fruitcake today and not use this saw. We'll save this for another project. Yeah, only 160 calories, look at that. Nothing but the best. sit here and tell you that uh, fruitcake is the best lube ever for sheet metal, but the fruit lube does work. That blade did not clog. You know, I'm kind of partial to Irish Spring soap myself, but in a pinch, if you need to, fruitcake. Why not? Okay, I was wrong. Um, I thought I could get away with the bandsaw for all of this, but as it turns out, in the corner there, I can't get to this one side. Now, I could mark the other side of it and flip the piece over and cut it, but I have this tool here. Let's we, let's play with this tool. For those that are wondering, you can find electric shears all over the place for anywhere from seventy to seventy dollars to like fifteen hundred dollars. Like there's some really nice ones from like the Fine Tool Company and a bunch of others, um, and it all varies. You know, the capacity, how many amps the motor is rated for, all of that stuff. Uh, this one was about 550 Got it at McMasterCar.com. And uh, I'm going to wear ear protection because it's probably going to be loud. I'm going to clamp this because I don't want it flapping all over the place. I like the cheesy rubber-coated clamps because it doesn't really mark the material. So that's a concern for you. And there you go. These are cheap, too. All right. Uh, safety glasses. Let's wear those, too. All the safety, now please note, I haven't bothered to read the instructions, and I'm not a professional. Whoa! 
Okay, that's incredible. Wow. That was really good. And it doesn't make, you know, some of them that are out there, the way they're designed, they take a slice out of the metal and it curls around. And uh, that slice can be, you know, quarter inch, 332nd wide. It can be pretty wide. And then it curls around and sometimes gets the, the tool stuck. This does not do that. And although that's not 10 gauge, that was still really fun. This is a good kind of thing for if you have a giant piece of material and you, you know, you don't have a good way to get it in the garage or, you know, it won't fit in your stomp shear or whatever, you know, this is a good tool for that. I haven't tried any curved cuts, but I will here. Um, but right now I'm going to bend this in the brake and then test fit it in the car. <laughs> Oh yeah, looking good. Well, I'm gonna push that a little further than necessary. There we go. All right. I don't know if this carpet will go back in, but some of it might. Maybe a little bit here and there. Not too bad. That was a lot of work, but uh, it's not too bad. I like it. Well, we have the main part of our cover made. Um, it's just kind of sitting in there. It doesn't fit exactly perfect because now I need a way to hold it in place. And um, once it's held in place, then I can figure out the panels that are gonna go left of it, right of it, in front of it. And what I'm going to use to hold it in place is something that's been around in the aircraft industry for decades. These are called Clico pins. And what a Clico pin is, is a temporary panel fastener. It uses these pair of pliers. And essentially the way you do this is these come in two sizes, eighth inch and three sixteenths. You drill an eighth inch pilot hole through the sheet metal that you want to fasten say to another sheet metal right there. So you've got two layers of metal, you drill an eighth inch hole through both panels, then you take this deal, put it through the hole, and when you squeeze it, it narrows down to an eighth of an inch. When you release it, there's a centering pin, and that centering pin right there spreads the two halves of the pin apart, making it larger than the hole it just went through and securely fastening both panels together. Uh, these are great. If you need to install lex and windows in a car, you're building sheet metal inner fenders, whatever it is, if you have two pieces of sheet metal you need to hold together, Clico pin is a really quick way to temporarily install something and remove it again and again and again. They're totally reusable. Uh, they're very cost effective. Like this kit here, I got off Amazon. And there's 50 of these pins with the pliers. And it also came with these Clico clamps, which I'll show you here in a second. This whole thing was 75 bucks. It was a pretty good deal. Uh, this is also pretty sweet. It's called a Clico clamp and uses the same kind of plier. And what this does is it will really securely grip two pieces of metal together. Again, temporarily. 
and it's ridiculously strong. Like, if I put one on each end of this thing, it is going to have no problem holding it together. And uh, the cool part about using the Clico clamps is you don't have to drill any holes. So as long as you can reach the end of the material, look at that. That does not, well, it just finally moved after I pulled it enough, but it's very strong. And again, it's a temporary way to hold two things together. I'll give you one more look, because these are sweet. There's the Clico clamp, Clico pin, Clico pliers. Everybody should have these at their house if you're, or your garage or whatever, if you're gonna fabricate stuff. And especially if you're working alone, like I am right now, I only have two hands. These are going to give me some more hands. I'm like, you know, Doc Ock with these things. Just holding everything together all at once. All right, as you can see, our panel is in temporarily. And we have to do a little more trimming down on the bottom there. But in general, that should give us enough clearance for the ladder bars to move up and down and change the mounting positions of them if we need to. Okay, here's the underside of the car. I wish I had time to go back and paint all this stuff because it's already rusting. Brand new parts, thanks to the moisture in Georgia, already got surface rust on them. But it's raining and it's really cold outside and I can't go spray bombing stuff in my garage. Wifey will not be happy about that. But uh, as you can see, we're using C-clamps along the edge of the frame rail there in the back of the car to hold our sheet metal in place. And uh, we've got a spring-loaded clamp over there, holding that side in place. We're in pretty good shape. I think we have a decent amount of clearance between the upper bar and our sheet metal there. What you have to keep in mind when you do this is the upper bar, you can change the mounting location on the rear end, which raises that end of the bar up. Plus, the suspension is going to cycle up and down. Um, so you got to have enough room for all of that. And it looks like we do. We're nowhere near it. So I'm calling it good. I'm calling it good. We'll go drill some holes, put some Clico pins in, and then start moving forward. Here's our next thing we got to tackle. We need to close out the area on each side and up front. So we're gonna make a bulkhead that goes from here to there and stretches across. We're gonna close out the sheet metal that was removed from the floor here and here, and then we're gonna fix this over to the frame rail. So probably go from the bottom and rivet that in there. And uh, for that, we're gonna, we're gonna employ some CAD design. I don't mean computers, I mean straight up cardboard aided drafting because that's what I have here. So we're gonna take scraps of cardboard like this, some basic measurements, make some templates, turn it into sheet metal, it'll be great. Okay, I have this piece of sheet metal. Feels like, I don't know, 60,000 thick. Uh, it's enough to do one of these, but this template actually works for the opposite side of the car because the car is pretty well built with regards to where the bar placement is on the cage. It's not enough to fit the whole thing though. Um, however, Cotton and Newburn were here for the Fast with Finnegan shoot on this car and they started making this closeout tunnel and it didn't quite fit. And uh, it's made of steel, so it's possible. Yeah, I can get one, I can get both of these pieces out of this using the new electric shears. <laughs> so yeah, I get to use that tool again, which is exciting. So all I'm gonna do is trace this out here and then go buck wild.
So I went ahead and broke an edge on here. Actually, I didn't break it, I already had it, but I left this edge so that this could have a nice finished part that dips down in there. And uh, made the rough cuts. And as you can see, it's pretty close, but it does need some work. It needs a little bit of tuning up right here. We we'll use the Sharpie to establish the gap all the way around. And same thing here. And then, as you can see, that'll butt up right there, which would be nice. And since this is going to break down, we're going to cut this edge off here. Because this is going to get broke past this tube right about here. And it will dip down under the floor and support this once it's riveted together. A little more tuning up here. There we go. Alright, so now we need to break this. Alright, so here's our panel. There's our mark. We want this edge to go down. So, I'm going to put it like this. I've already scribed the line there, and then I'm going to bend this up. And I haven't bothered to figure out exactly what degree it needs to go to. We'll just wing it for here. Oh, look at that. Tilting camera. Pretty sweet. You're not going to get that shot on just any old YouTube channel. Mostly because I screwed it up. <laughs> All right, let's see how we did. pretty good. Now we need to scribe this line and break this back the other way because this has to go down and then forward. And as you can see we're about that far off so that's about how much lip we're going to end up with. So we're going to go past this line and then bend this back up. Bingo! Look at that. Now, this gets a series of holes and riveted to the floor right there. All right, everybody, we are humming right along here. The center closeout panel is pretty much done. I ended up flanging it here uh, so that I could rivet it to this panel. I was gonna do it down below, but the ladder bar's in the way and there was really no good way to get a drill in there, so. Uh, rivet on that side, rivet on this side. Um, I'm going to get this mounted real quick and then I'm going to start working on the front panel and these lower panels here. somewhere. Left side, right side. Semi-permanently attached. I mean, I suppose you could leave the Clico pins in there, but then you wouldn't have them next time. So we'll go back in there and pop rivet those, but not before we build everything to close out the center. And uh, right now I'm having a debate with myself whether to continue this cut on over or just fill that gap there. I'm not not entirely sure. I need to eyeball this some more and figure out what will be the most expedient way to fill that in there.
very loud. <laughs> UPS store. <laughs> oh my goodness. These are all UPS store texts that I'm getting right there. Because you crazy people, I love you for this, keep sending me packages. <laughs> and uh, hopefully not fruitcakes. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what, that is one of the funnest part of my day. It's when that text message goes off saying, you got stuff in the box. Okay, that one's in, those two are in, that one's in. We just had to figure out something for that part right there, which is ugly, because <laughs> you got three things on three different levels. This is the original tunnel, which is taller than everything. There's the drive shaft safety loop, which is lower than everything. There's the part I made, and then there's the two side pieces. This right here, to make it out of metal, will end up being something that's hammered and dollied and English wheeled and tools I don't have here. So I'm gonna make something that fits sort of rough and then, not gonna lie, I'm gonna Gorilla Tape it in there because I'm out of time. I have to make the car run. We have to race it tomorrow. So yeah, not proud of it, but that's what's gonna happen. What does Freiburger always say? Don't get it right, just get it running. It's a wise man. All right. Now that everything is basically done, we're going to remove one Clico pin at a time and pop rivet this thing together. These are eighth inch diameter rivets. Uh, unfortunately, they're steel. I wish they were aluminum, but I don't have any aluminum and it's late at night. So these are temporary. Someday, well, who am I kidding? I'm not going to go back and change these. I mean, I'd like to, but uh, yeah. Probably not going to happen. And right about now, I wish I had a pneumatic rivet gun. That's one. And rivets, much like Clico pins, come in all different shapes and sizes um, and lengths. These are both eighth inch diameter rivets, but this is a short one. This is a medium one to make longer ones that'll reach even further back. Uh, just depends on what you're looking for. These also come in different diameters, like eighth inch, five thirty second, three sixteenths, quarter inch. Sky's the limit. exactly fit anymore but it does hide it a little bit The other thing that's really cool about these pop rivet pliers, these are from Stanley, is that the head swivels. So no matter what kind of awkward position you're in, you can still get a good grip on these things.
one left. Done. 